Hey, Howard. Howard, can you hear me? Hello? Morning, everyone. Good morning. Can you guys hear me okay? I can hear you, Bob. All right. Good morning. Good morning. Let me get a few more tiles up here so I can see more people. Good awesome. early morning. Yeah, Raphael. You guys know Raphael is out in San Francisco. So if you think it's early here, then look out. <laughs> early, <yeah>. oh, wow. <laughs> but Raphael is excited to get out here to Tampa so he can have some good uh, uh, Cuban coffee and bread. Uh, uh, so uh, and and start I, enjoying these meetings. I got after. my. You got yours. You're ready, huh, Raphael? Yeah, absolutely. Awesome. Good deal. Good deal. Well, um, we'll give everybody a couple minutes to see if anybody else is logging on. Um, and uh, uh, this is what. Um, my plan is for uh, this, I don't know if I have mine. You guys can hear me, right? Because mine says I'm yeah. muted. All right, maybe I have yeah. a Yeah, you're okay. Oh, I got this up. Everybody, I can hear everybody. All right, good deal. Um, let me mute that just to make sure, so. Okay, cool. Um, all right, so uh, anyway, so my plan was is that I was going to, um, this will be our final session for this session, right? So this is uh, uh, technically session six. Sometimes we have seven. Sometimes we've had eight. It just depends on uh, how the flow of the uh, of it goes. But I'm going to leave you with some tasks that kind of get you through the next bit, as well as if you haven't seen the others, some of you, I'm going to encourage you to go back and take a look at the intros and, and some of the other things. Um, that uh, that we have. My goal is to try and make this kind of a wrap up one as well as um, give it the ability that if somebody came in and hadn't seen any of these that they could kind of get a grasp of what we're trying to accomplish here in our 100k clubs and um, give them uh, for lack of a better word marching orders for the next bit to see hey look what am I going to do if I'm Newer. Now, Chris, remind me, are, are, what's your situation? And, and you're muted right now, so you'll have to unmute to let us know. Um, yeah, yeah, so I've been in the mortgage industry in some fashion since about 2007. Yep. Uh, back in March, I was LOAing for a loan officer locally, and a company from my hometown is merging into our market and asked me to take the faithful leap and join them. So nice. in March, I went... Full commission. I dove in. Nice. Good <laughs> and it's been scary, but good. <laughs> awesome. Good. And so you're, you're a loan officer, right? Yes. Okay, good. And that's with what company? Uh, OVM Financial. Awesome. Good. Well, congratulations on the jump. And uh, I hope the leap uh, uh, wasn't uh, too painful when you, when, when you have or have not landed. So um, no, I've been really me. fortunate to run into you and Sarah and some other, you know, awesome. Michelle, like some other yeah, amazing... Yeah, yeah supporter so you know you wake up in that little bit of panic every day like what did you do but then you remind yourself and push through <laughs> i'm reminded of a uh, an old country song and that's one of the things i'm trying to purge out of my life though i like country music but if you listen to country music it's not very positive <laughs> at all but there there's an old country song from way back that says isn't it funny how uh <clears throat> even falling feels like flying even for a little while right <laughs> it's like it's like it's like hello hey i'm flying i'm soaring oh no i'm falling <laughs> yeah i mean it, it, it was nice to have the cushy side but i was literally doing all the work and making somebody else the money yeah, so that's, well that's yeah. what you know buyers agents do for big teams and so on and so forth so but that's just part of the process so well good well i'm glad you joined us and uh, Thank you. and this obviously has application you know we we don't focus exclusively on real estate even though i believe that these are principles that work regardless of the industry it could be somebody jump in here that wants to grow their floral business for all i know right and and the principles are the principles so um 
Well, that's good. Well, let's get, let's get through this, and then I want to have some time at the end if you guys want to ask some questions of me. And obviously, I'll, I'll wrap up and, and, and hope you guys know that I'm always available, right? Uh, uh, and the group is obviously available online. Uh, the 100K group is powerful. Um, it's amazing to see, you know, what is going on. And Howard, uh, I apologize. I think I saw your uh, quick text yesterday. Yeah, we, we did a last minute shift on Tuesday to, to cancel that meeting yesterday and make it today um, just because of my travel schedule. So uh, I did let the guy know who, who was giving us that room over there. So uh, he had, had advanced notice as well. Okay. Okay, perfect. Awesome. Good deal. And Howard, by the way, I'll make this announcement in case anybody here or anybody that is watching online. Howard, I'm assuming you still have some spots left for your um, uh, fishing uh, thing? Fishing challenge, yeah. Why? Okay. Tell, us, tell us what that is. Okay. Basically, we're going to have probably anywhere between 200, 250 kids, ages 3 to 13. And we supply the fishing rods, which means we have to assemble 250 fishing oh, rods <laughs> with lines and bobbers and hooks and all that. And I need volunteers on June the 6th at the YMCA in Palm Harbor uh, from 6 o'clock in the evening till probably 8 o'clock to help assemble rods. And the biggest need is probably on June the 9th, we need people to man the piers. There's four piers. We need at least three people, preferably four people, to help the kids bait the hooks, take fish off the hooks, measure the fish. So awesome. yeah, that's probably our biggest need. Very good. And so, what time? What, go ahead. Sorry, I'm and sorry. What's on June 9th? It's June 9th, and the uh, the kids' fishing challenge starts at eight o'clock. And I tell people to get there at seven thirty in the morning. They have breakfast and coffee and so forth. They supply uh, t-shirts for volunteers and a little lunch afterwards. Awesome. Well, I'd love to help. So if we can exchange numbers or whatever later, I'd love to help out. So sure, fantastic. Awesome. Howard, why don't you go ahead and give us, since people will be watching this later, give us your direct, what's the best way to contact you? Okay, best number is 727-631-4191. Okay. That's awesome. And a lot of these kids are, are kind of like maybe from single single parent families and so on and so forth, never had a chance to... to... There's going to be a lot, there's some of that, but there's also, uh, I mean, you'll have the mothers and fathers with the kids and, oh, you know... Yeah. It's a lot of fun. I mean, nice. the parents are very appreciative. Uh, we're going to be one of the sponsors again this year. So. Nice. Cool. Well, good. Well, hey, do that and feel free. You know, I, I, I kind of closely guard that 100K uh, group and everything else, but feel free to, again, re uh, put, put that out there and, and feel free to put your contact information if you want, you know, so that they can reach out to you uh, for those who are willing to do it. And I'll, I'll be, you know, continuously lending my support behind that. Thank you very much. I will do that. Thanks. Awesome. Good deal. Okay. All right. So let's dig in. So um, being this is the final session, here's what I've decided to do. And I noticed that I, I created this slide just this morning. So normally I have these in, uh, we don't see all the bullet points at once. So you guys get the advanced, uh, you'll get to see where we're headed with this because I want to discuss each bullet point a bit anyway. And um, dialogue with you. And, and again, remember, this is an interactive group. So feel free to chime in uh, if uh, you have questions and or uh, things you want to add uh to this so i want to just sit there and say okay um you know this hit me um i think it was either late last week or early this week there was a post and i can't remember if it was in the 100k club or if it was in the just us agents for fhr uh group but uh one there was a almost a, a cry for help if you will from an agent that kind of threw up was throwing up the, the white flag saying I am so over cold calling and, and uh, you know, trying to reach out to expireds and for sell by owners. I, it's just not working for me. It's not who I am, right? Now, um, most of our agents, we understand, are coming from a Keller Williams mentality, right? Because uh, of our 1,300 plus agents, over 1,000 of them used to be with Keller Williams, right? <laughs> so um, with that in mind, a lot of them are graduates of, of the bold classes, the ignite classes and, and those kind of things. And those are great concepts, right? They teach you how to go out there and really attack the business and there's nothing wrong with it. However, my opinion is, is that only about 3% of the, of the general population is prepared to do what they teach in bold, right? Is, is, and that is, Hey, today is expired day or here is, 
um, you know, uh, for sale by owner day and we're going to teach you scripts and you're just going to bang and smile and dial and bang the phones and here we go and i i don't doubt that if you dialed enough phone numbers you would get results it's absolutely the truth right the problem is is that about three percent are willing to even make the first phone call even though they task them and they send them out in the halls okay you guys can't come back until you've made so many phone calls they're calling people their family and friends and pretending like they're calling it for sale by owner Right. It's, it's because it, inevitably they just don't want to do it. Right? <laughs> and it's true. And I understand. Right. Because given the choice, most people are going to crawl under the table when, you know, hey, look, if I wanted to go work in a call center, I'd go get hired by a call center. Right. Yeah. Okay. And exactly. so, go ahead. I'm sorry, Janine. Oh, I just said exactly. Yeah. Right. And so That's why we're no longer with Keller Williams. Right. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I, and I get that. And, and, and again, I think it would work if you work it. But at the end of the day, even if it works at the at, at, at come five o'clock, you're so emotionally drained and feeling like, hey, that wasn't who I was, that uh, it didn't feel good. Right. And it didn't feel the way you'd want to be treated and so on and so forth. So um, uh, so when I when I saw this young lady raise her hand and, and reach up. I was like, and, and many of the agents jumped in and said, well, that's because we don't do it that way. That's why you're burned out. That's why you're not having the success. Because if your heart's not 100% behind it, you're not going to have as great a success in cold calling anyway, because you're kind of doing it with the expectation of a negative response, right? Okay. And so uh, with that in mind, I said, you know what? I want to go back one last time and revisit what we promote here, right? And this, again, if nothing else, this will be your marching orders through the summer, right? And uh, at the end, we, we're gonna encourage people to still have get together in, in mastermind groups, whether they be virtually or, on, you know, uh, or in face-to-face, face-to-face ideally, that they can support each other in their struggles and their successes and all those kind of things. Because I'm a firm believer that teams um, combine together, not a formal team per se, but mastermind groups that are there to, to help each other uh, done well can be very, very effective, right? Because this business can beat you up a little bit if you allow it to. So let's figure out a way to not allow it to, right? Let's, let's circle the wagons, if you will, and, uh, and do that. So um, here's the thing. Let me just go through some of these bullet points. Like I said, I, I've, I've shown you all the bullet points. So try not to look ahead and, and get distracted. Um, the biggest differentiator, in my opinion, in anything I've seen is implementation, Right. The, this is what we say. I mean, again, we, you know, we have lots of hashtags, even though I've never, I'm not even a member of Twitter. Uh, and so I've never tweeted in my life, but I know they love hashtags. So I love the hashtag concept. So I've adopted the hashtag even without being a tweeter. Um, and one of my favorite hashtags or one that I use often is, it's a long one. It's hashtag to do what to do is not the problem to do is the problem, right? Because if we sat down and, and Chris, whether it be your industry or, or the rest of you in, in our real estate industry, we know that, that if someone put a gun to my head, I could tell them what, what I needed to do today to be successful in real estate, okay? Really, I really could. I mean, someone said, hey, look, you have to tell me what are the six things that you should do today to be successful. I'd say, well, I need to do this, 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 and this, and this. So the issue is not what to do. Most of us know that. The issue is the implementation or what we call the to do, right? And how do we drive ourselves to get that done, okay? And it's a fact of life, and this leads us into our next bullet point, that success is going to require action. It is not enough to know because we can make another long hashtag if we want, but we say this all the time, to know and not to do is not to know, Right. Does that make sense? So having the head knowledge all day long without the action to back this up is useless. By the way, you know, I listened to um, I've made it a task and I'm going to try and, uh, and it's going to be a large undertaking. I've, I've memorized several um, uh, passages of scripture recently, and now I'm going to task myself to memorize essentially the entire scrolls in that greatest salesman in the world, which is in essence, you know, uh, it's funny. I'm not, um, uh, uh, I'm, uh, I'm Christian is my faith, right? 
but I hear these stories. I read a lot of spy novels as well. So I read a lot, but I read my fair share of positive stuff. I, I do allow myself a, um, a break and, and I love my little spy novels. I kind of uh, psychologically, uh, I think, I still imagine myself with a go bag anywhere. And then if I ever got called by the CIA, <laughs> I'd jump right in, right? I'd, I'd love to do that. Um, and uh, uh, by the way, my youngest son, Samuel, the one that was adopted from Russia, I don't know if we've had this, this discussion. He actually is um, uh, very dark skinned. You know, people think he doesn't look like he's from Russia because he was from the Southern region, which is like uh, Georgia and um, closer to the Middle East, really, right? And his name was Samir when we, when we got him. It's Samuel now, but he was Samir, right? But uh, he was almost three when we got him. But I guarantee he would be a perfect CIA operative. <laughs> I, I just, not only does he have the look right so he could blend right in right he could go to the middle east and blend right in no no, no problem whatsoever right um bob you'll but, never bob excuse me you, you'll never know who is a cia agent. that's right Raphael it could be you i that's what you know what let me stand back and, and i agree um you guys talk about me right well, hey you say I, I i have a home in nashville but you don't know where i go when i leave here <laughs> <laughs> Uh, it's funny. But the other thing, Samuel, when he was, when we only had him about a year, I remember, you know, we live in, in, in Tennessee. We all, our garages are in our, our basements on the basement level. Right. And we have two story homes on top of that. And so Samuel's bedroom is on the third floor and he used to go to bed early. And I remember one night I was taking him to, or one morning I was taking him to, uh, 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 his preschool. And, um, he said, Hey dad, where'd you go last night? I thought, you know, I got a pretty quiet car and it, I did go out to go get some milk or something like that. Like, you know, like around 1030 and we realized we were out and um, his flow, his, he was long out and he sleeps pretty hard. Right. So I don't think I saw, he saw me left leave. And I said, well, how'd you know? And he looked at my front right tire. He said, your tire's not in the same spot it was when we parked yesterday. <laughs> oh uh, you know, I said, okay, all right. So, all right, I like that, right? It's a- uh, There's CIA right there. <laughs> that's right, he's got-, he's got I like him, I like yeah, him. Me too. <laughs> so, that being said, um, I, can't, oh, I don't know how I got off on this. What was I talking about? Um, spy you, novels, spy novels. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, here's what I figured is that in my spy novels, all these religious zealot jihadists, right, in my spy novels have all memorized the Quran, right? Front, front to back, cover to cover. I figured, you know what? If dad gummon, if they can do that, then I can memorize. My brain is powerful enough. And, you know, and it's true. We know that some of these people have memorized the entire Quran and so on and so forth. And why wouldn't I, first of all, as a Christian, that's why I memorize a lot of scripture because we're tasked to, right? And, you know, thy word have I hidden in my heart um, that I may not sin against thee is we're, we're, we're tasked to do that um, um, as well. But um, why not memorize some positive and put it in there? So anyway, all that being said, I was listening today to scroll nine, the greatest salesman in the world. And it covers this right here. Success requires action. If you go back and look at scroll nine, it's I will act now. I will act now, right? And if you look, he's talking to all salesmen and, and we're all salesmen out there, right? And regardless of what we do, right? We're selling something, selling ourselves if nothing else. And, you know, those who um, are willing to act are going to far exceed those unwilling to act. So again, let me use this as a, as a chance to uh, give a commercial again for the, um, uh, great salesman in the world. I'm a firm believer in that book. I, I love it. Um, I think it's, uh, uh, it's changed how I uh, approach each and every day. Um, and so go back and look at it. I am in the process of posting my takes on the scrolls. But I, again, don't just look at my takes on the scrolls when I post in the 100k. Go back and read that scroll, because I'm just taking some excerpts out of it. Go see what speaks to you and really drive those home. So, um, and again, Action, 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 all right? Action overcomes fear. We've heard it all the time, and we just got to go out and, and take the step, okay? Number three, eyeball to eyeball is the most cost-effective way to win in this business. Raphael, you and I had an appointment on Sunday um, to chat, and, and we couldn't connect because you got so tied up at your open house, right? Because out there in, on, the, on the West Coast, 
and we ended up missing each other in the time frame that we were designed to talk. But I thought, what a great, you texted me and I said, what a great opportunity to know that you were tied up and your open house was so busy that you couldn't do it. And there, A, not only were you taking action, right? Obviously you were, but um, here's another long hashtag, right? Eyeball the eyeball beats pixel the eyeball every day of the week, right? And we hear the stories time and time again where some other agent has spent two to three thousand dollars a month to have a couple Zillow zip codes, right, to generate this business. And they've been dialoguing back and forth on Zillow because they're the premier agent and so on and so forth. That person who's dialoguing with that premier agent gets up, is driving to Lowe's to go pick up something, sees your open house sign, walks in the door, and sees Raphael smiling face, Howard smiling face, Janine smiling face, shakes hands, and it's over. All those thousands of dollars that this person has spent out the window because they've had a chance to come eyeball to eyeball with you, right? And after your signs are purchased, there is no cost, right? That is why it is the most cost-effective way to win in this business. Um, little side note. So Michael Mayer was back in town, right? Uh, doing another, you know, thing, prepping for his June 22nd event. And uh, Sarah, uh, Chris, who you know, um, had uh, uh, set it up. And he had back-to-back, -back, well, he had a, a morning session and an afternoon session this time. And we had a chance for about it's probably eight or 10 of us to have some lunch with him in between, right? Uh, in between his sessions. And chatting with him, you know, he, he's a, a, a fantastic businessman. He's got an incredible story. He lives out what he teaches in his book. I can attest to that. I can now call him a friend. But to watch him and hear him tell his stories of how, A, how he built his team, how he analyzed his return on investment. Now, you, you know, understand that we teach our, our agents to become very shrewd business people, right? You want to treat your business like a business, right, with the respect it deserves. With that in mind, he, he shared a story where one of the best uh, mentors he ever had um, uh, was a very successful businessman in and, of, in and of himself in a different industry. But if he ever ran into Michael, he asked Michael, let me see your P&L. And so Michael always had to carry a copy of his profit and loss in wow. his pocket. Okay. And so that's a great mentor, right? And so that drives, not that it's all about money. We understand that, right? But the cool thing is, is that when your mind is on it, right? then you're cognizant of what you spend. It's kind of a Dave Ramsey approach, right, to, to finances, that, hey, if, my, if, if, uh, if I'm aware of my situation, right, it's also an Alcoholics Anonymous approach to the world, right, that says, hey, look, I can't fix what I don't first admit, right? If you go to any 12-step program, the first thing, uh, the first step is I admit that I have a problem, right? Until you can come to that point, then you'll never fix it, right? And so with that in mind, Michael had made a lot. Oh, there's your P&L. Good job, Janine. I love it. That's awesome. See? All right, you passed the Michael Mayer test, right? Because he'll be to ask people. That's awesome. We're um, working on sure. taxes, so the table's all full. Oh, see, there you go. <laughs> Understand. It's a good time to take a look at P&L. I'm looking at mine as well because I'm getting a mortgage loan for my house out here in Windermere. So um, I, I have to provide P&Ls on a consistent basis. Oh, I need another updated one. I gave you one two days ago. We need another updated one. Uh, so those, those loan officers, Chris, I'm telling you, man. Uh, I know it's not you. It's the, it's the underwriters. You guys blame me. It is. I get it. I get it. <laughs> it's how they get back at us. <laughs> That's right. Exactly. And they're just protect. They're just CYA. So if anything ever does go wrong, they can prove that they did. They followed, checked all the boxes. So they did. Yes. Yeah, understood. Uh, and they have a job to do. So we, we're okay. They do. I don't think most realize that, you know, they're scored. Yeah. So yeah. If they're scored based on how many loans get sold back and uh, various other things. So yeah. they can lose their jobs if they don't do a good job. I don't think people <laughs> realize makes complete sense. And they're paid by the bank to do what they're supposed to do is to try and assume the worst in everybody and, and talk me into giving you this loan. You're guilty into proving innocent. <laughs> you know? And I get it. And that's okay. Um, and, you know, Cause they got it. The bank has to protect, protect their P and L right. Um, as, as well. So, um, and that's all okay. Um, anyway, so I was reminded that Michael, um, you know, he built his whole business as a team leader at, you know, having this, this larger team in real estate. 
um, and, and he said it at lunch and he said it so quickly that most didn't catch it. So I made sure I repeated it for everybody. And he said, because their business was built on referrals, it allowed them to do some really creative things with compensating their team members, mm. right? And we look at the teams that we see around Tampa Bay in particular, and Raphael, I can't speak to, to, this, to the Bay Area, but we can talk about since you're coming here anyway. Um, uh, you know, a lot of the big teams that we think about are the high producing teams. They almost wear it as a badge of honor. If you ever talk to them, yes. How much money they spend on advertising, right? right? They're like, Oh, I spend a million, $85,000 a month is being spent on, you know, creating leads. Right. Well, Michael would say, shame on you. Right. right. Is that, because if you look at the equation for return on investment, right, the investment part, that 85000 is the denominator, right? And in essence, Chris, you talk about waking up every day having to, you know, go kill your, your food, you know, which is what we all do, right? Hey, it's time to go eat. So I had to go, you know, I'm a hunter gatherer is what I am, right? It's time to go out and earn my, earn my money. Um, when you've got an $85,000 nut to crack before you even break even, that's crazy. Boy, that's crazy, right? And so because of that, that's why they, they, it's hard for them to keep buyer's agents because they have to take 50% and, and, and all this kind of stuff to try and keep buyer's agents on task. Whereas Michael said, hey, look, I was able to do some really creative things because we had people calling us, right? right. We were to the next fourth point. They had stopped chasing and started tra attracting business, right? Right. <clears throat> And yes. Michael, and I told Michael, said, hey, look, as a former math teacher, I talk to my boys all the time, my older one in particular, because he gets it. He's got a business mind. But I said, hey, look, when your denominator is zero, the answer is infinite. All right. And that means, hey, if my investment is zero, return on investment, even if I make a dollar, I'm way ahead of the person who made 70,000, who grossed $70,000 this month, but had an $85,000 nut to crack, <laughs> right? Because they're right. negative 15,000, right? right? Well, the I fact that like I'm, go ahead. The, sorry, I feel like in the mortgage industry, they offer it because it's easier to give somebody that lead than really train them to go be a good loan officer and get business, you know, the right way. So well, it's, it's so it's, true. And, you know, and we get into real estate and let's go to Howard's uh, fishing um, uh, thing. Let's bring that back in. You know, what we're trying to do here is I would rather teach you how to fish than you to go fish, right? Yeah. Right? It's the old give a man a fish, feed him for a day, teach him how to fish, feed him for a lifetime. Right. right. Bob, in, in here in this uh, uh, branch office where, where I am, uh, there's like about 60 agents or so. And uh, I would say about 15 or 20 are really active coming here all the time. But the top producing agent here, she's an absolutely amazing, wonderful Christian woman uh, on selfies to the nth degree to, to the point that her husband needed a kidney and she happened to be a perfect match. Wow. And she donated it to, to him. But as successful as she was, um, she went to a Berkshire Hathaway convention uh, a year ago, and they advised her that in order to keep growing, she had to build a team. So she built a team with a, another super bright person, uh, one of my favorite people in the office. And they are my two favorite people in the office. Nice. And this lady was uh, an assistant to uh, Michael Dell from the Dell computer. Yeah, yeah, okay. And she really knows technology and what have you. But after she formed the team, which is not signing blood forever, she says every year I reevaluate this, the expenses that she's going through. Yeah. And she's not a, she, everything from her comes from the heart and the good service that she gives. She's not a subscriber to Bustini or anybody else. Right. She's just a, she, she just knows what to do and how to take care of the people. Uh, she's just an amazing person, but it's, it's interesting that the philosophy of this company, uh, at least in this area, in this, uh, we have about 1,200 agents, and our broker said that she just uh, acquired four more offices. Wow. She's got four, 45 offices all the way over to Reno, uh, Sonoma County, everywhere around here. 
Wow, wow. But it, it, it's that mentality that people have to build a team in order to succeed. And then, you know, you, you, you have the expenses. I, I just wanted to mention that but one thing that I don't want to forget is I have, a, I don't know if we can make a hashtag of this, but let me read it to you real quick. I had to Wait. find Are you ready? Ready. Okay. Work will win when wishy-washy wishing won't. <laughs> you know, you got to put that, put that in the hundred K if you will, got make it. it a comment somewhere. You got okay, it. Work will win over wishy washy. No, no, no. It's, it's all with a dog. Work will win when wishy washy wishing won't. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Work will win when wishy washy wishing won't. won't. Right. Got it. I put uh, it out there. It's so true. And remember, you know, uh, I think I shared a couple sessions back, you know, I'm getting my uh, MBA now. And I, I joked around when we we're talking about running our businesses, like businesses, that nowhere in my course curriculum that I have to take, I looked ahead and I have my all my classes mapped out that I have to get to finish my MBA. And the willy nilly wishy washy approach to business is not one of the course offerings. Right? <laughs> <laughs> you know? Um, it's, it, but that's fantastic, Raphael, and I appreciate you sharing because it's so true, right? There has to be a plan, and we have to work the plan, and it takes discipline to work that plan, right? right? And that's where the um, accountability partners and a good one, not someone that's just going to pat you on the hand and say, that's okay, you tried, but someone's going to say, hey, no, you said you were going to, and you didn't. So, hey, you know, and I'm a firm believer in having rewards associated with my um, – uh, achievements, right? And they don't have to, I'm not talking, and they have to be commensurate with the achievement, right? Hey, look, if I'm going to make, two, I'm going to do two open houses this week, right, is my goal. And if I do, then I'm going to reward myself with uh, a trip to the driving range and hit a bucket of balls, right? Okay, and for, you know, for golf. That's commensurate, right? Hey, I'm going to do two open houses this week. And if I do so, I'm going to reward myself with a trip to Europe, all right. <laughs> Does it, you know, there has to be a balance there, right? You know what I mean? It has to match up with what you're doing, but let me warn you here. And, and we've talked about this in the past is um, when you set a goal and you set a uh, reward associated with that goal, be sure that you follow through. All right. Two reasons. You don't want to first, here's the danger. Let's say I said I was going to do two open houses and I did one. And then the second one, I got called away after two minutes in. So I really only did one, right? Now I could convince myself that I did two and reward myself. The problem by rewarding myself, even though I really hadn't done two, is that the next time I set a goal, I'm not going to push myself because my mind is extremely powerful. It's going to say, well, last time you kind of fiddled through that second one. You kind of, so just go ahead and do one and then you'll be, you'll, you'll be good, right? So you don't want to get there, nor do you want to physically do two and then get so busy that you forget to reward yourself because the next time your mind, your mind wants to push your body in anything, the say, oh, last time you pushed yourself and did that, you didn't reward yourself. So why even do it? Right? So you got to be true to yourself. You got to be honest with your responses to your, to your goal setting. Is that fair enough? Yes. All right. And Raphael, make sure you post that, please. I love that. It's already done. All right. Good. Good deal. All right. Uh, that's, that's beautiful. All right. So um, eyeball, eyeball the eyeballs, the most cost effective. Oh, getting back to, because here's the thing. Remember when the denominator is zero, right? When my investment is zero, then my profit margin, my return on investment is infinite. Because you divide anything by zero, the answer is a lot, right? It becomes an incredible concept. So um, the lower the nut to crack, to Raphael's point, this lady, and she's got nothing set in, in stone, the top producing agent there, she may go back and look and say, hey, look, yeah, I did more volume this year, but I made less money, right? At the end of the day, my bottom line P&L doesn't look as good as it did last year. And that's why we need to analyze, um, you know, from a, a real estate perspective, okay, what's our true uh, uh, out of the gross commission income. We have to be aware of that because having a volume um, goal is great,
But if I did seven million this year, but only average two point one percent commission rate on that seven million, now I'm at one hundred and forty two thousand of, of gross commission income, right? Whereas if I had done only five million, but mm -hmm. average three percent on my commission rate. Now I'm at $150,000, so I'm actually grossing more, doing less. So these are things we have to analyze and see where we are and, and have um, all those numbers in mind. And I'm a firm believer, and if you've ever been to any of our offices, you understand that how in the world can you have 1,300 plus agents and uh, a total of seven offices in, in, across the state and a, those total of seven offices, unlike your, your offices, Raphael, um, I think the total square footage of our seven offices is maybe about 82 to 8,400 square feet in total between them all, all of them added up. Right. Um, because we are a firm believer that I can pass along the, the money to the agent because I keep my overhead in check as well, you know, providing agents right. what they want without, you know, um, getting that there. So good, good morning. Stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Do you have something you want to add? I'm sorry. No, no, no. I was just saying good morning to oh, okay. gotcha. <laughs> another early riser here. All right, perfect. Tell them to jump on in and join us. We're happy to have them. All right. <laughs> um, all right, so we're going to stop chasing and start attracting, right? Remember, we, talk, we, we stop and say, hey, look, the Michael Mayer effect is that, hey, we're not going to strive to do business with strangers. Why not do business with people who already know, like, and trust us? Are you with me? Right? There are people that know, like, and trust you. So why not? Let's focus our efforts on that. Or if we are meeting strangers, let's not chase them. Let's just be so attractive that they feel compelled or engaged to be around us. Right now, I use two words there, compelled and engaged. Right. Let's change those to verbs and say, or more active verbs, let's say that, and say, guess what that means? That means I need to be compelling and engaging, right? <laughs> if I want people compelled and engaged to do business with me, then I better be compelling and engaging. And guess what? Okay, compelling, engaging right here, right? Salesy right here. They are polar opposites. Oh, great. Right? Okay. They compelling and engaging does not mean that you're slick tongue and silver lipped or whatever the term would be, right? That you've got the greatest scripts and people just fall over in your wake just because of who you are, right? And what you said. You know what the 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 the, the part is? You're genuine. When you're genuine, full of integrity, show that you care. This compelling and engaging is a byproduct of that right and that's all you got to do you just got to go be you right Raphael you just got to go tell your story Raphael's got a fantastic story about how he came here from Cuba and his parents sent him here you know uh without them just so because they wanted a better life for him it's a fantastic you know but that's a story that is compelling and engaging because it's honest and sincere and you can tell the integrity and he loves our country and his country and, and, and everything else about that. So it's a very compelling thing. Each of us have a compelling reason for people to want to be around us. And if it's nothing more than, you know what, I'm going to look at you with love in my eyes, scroll number two, right? And I'm going to engage everybody and say, hey, look, I want to serve you right? Michael Mayer shared in this, and I didn't know this, but you know, the root word of deserve, right? You, you feel like, hey, look, I want to deserve the business. Deserve the Latin, it comes from Latin roots of, of service, de serve, of service. So you deserve relationships, you deserve introductions, you deserve referrals, because you have earned the right, or you've been of service to them. Does that make sense? So what a better way to go through life, though, rather than, hey, today's the day we're going to cold call chiropractors, right? Instead, hey, you know what? I'm just going to go be of service to people so I can of serve or deserve the business, right? It's, just, it's a powerful way of going. So if we're going to stop chasing people we don't know and start attracting that, those that we do know or even that people that we just newly meet, 
that they, you know, would feel that they, they are attracted to us. That means the next step, the next bullet point down here, that means working on me and making changes, right? If I'm going to attract people, then I need to be attractive. And how are we attractive, right? Well, and that, our Western mind automatically goes to physically attractive, right? Okay. But the reality is, is that, remember, we teach, we're going to work on four LYs. And the four, four LYs lead us to the fifth LY, right? And let's go over the four. We're going to grow spiritually, emotionally, intellectually, and physically, right? Those four components, by the way, I think I shared last time how I thought I was just genius because I came up with those and then I reread uh, – uh, Covey's seven habits in the <laughs> those, those, in order to do that he wrote that in 89 long before I was involved in anything like this and said in order for us to grow in any, any any area of life you've got to grow spiritually emotionally intellectually and physically and I thought oh, okay great so maybe it wasn't an original thought but that's okay um, actually when they're not original thoughts that usually means they're they're more principled right that they've been around a while and that's usually long lasting and, and better stuff anyway right so um and, and that that's good and then the fifth LY comes as a byproduct of those four, right? We're, we're, we're better in these things. And then the fifth LY financially is just a growth that is a byproduct or a, a harvest based upon the sowing of these things. Okay. Are you with me? Cool. Mm -hmm. All right. So that's how we focus our lives is that we want to get better in all those things. Um, you remember when I went back and I said, hey, we, we've got engaging and compelling on this side and salesmen over here and they're polar opposites. <laughs> Right. That's why we promote at our um, company that we don't call ourselves uh, real estate salespeople. We call ourselves real estate consultants. Mm -hmm. Right. Because yeah. a consultant has a different perspective. A consultant is I'm going to advise a client on the best course of action for them. And sometimes that may mean talking them out of business. Right. Out of business for me. Hey, look, you know what? Based upon what I'm seeing here. I know we could probably squeak this through. And if we could get somebody to falsify a W-2, then we can get this done or whatever, right? We're trying to cram a square peg into a round hole. And the reality is, well, you know what? Let's back it up six months. Let's get you on a strong financial footing and let's revisit this so you can own a home. And not like me, I was so passionate about owning a home at the age of 23 because I saw my parents rent their whole lives that I bought a brand new home, more home than I should have bought. I forced myself into it. I wasn't in real estate at the time. It was great. But then I looked around as a brand new home. And for the next six months, I had sheets on my windows because I couldn't afford window covers. <laughs> oh, goodness. Right? <laughs> right? It's just like, and they weren't real happy with the HOA. All right? Get the sheets down. You know, these are all retirees. I'm like, I'm broke. And they said, well, why'd you buy too big a home? I just did, right? And so... Um, Been uh, there and done that and got the t-shirt. Yeah. <laughs> so why not? Let's back it up and let's, let's, let's help people consult them, right? To make right. it good. And, you know, at the end of the day, every time I've consulted people, and even if I've consulted them out of business, seems like those are the ones that refer me the fastest. Right. Right? And I get this, all this batch of new business that I never knew because I just did the right thing, right? And, and to help people. So um, that's how we like to do that, right? And then if you remember, this is one of our other hashtags down here. The last one is you have to earn the right, right? That nobody is obliged or obligated or owes you a referral or an introduction. I see endless post after endless post after endless post, agents posting, so frustrated. My friends know that I'm in the business and they use somebody else. So they, you know what I mean? We see it all the time, right? And the reality is nobody owes you anything, right? You have to earn the right to be introduced or to be referred. And that means, in Michael's terminology, you have to go give massive value first, you right. can't expect massive value from somebody just because you passed the test and because you went to third grade together. Right. Uh -huh. Okay. Yeah. It does not yeah. that, you know, it, that is not the, the requirements. Those are not the requirements for a referral. I have a license. We went to third grade. You owe me business. All right. Yeah. 
It doesn't work, right? Now, it can, but you still need to be engaged in giving them massive value, whatever that might be. And it may be as simple as introduction to a good mechanic they can trust to, hey, I just stopped by this great bakery and thought you might like the croissants there because I know you were just in France and we're raving about all the great bread there. And this is about as close to Paris as I've seen here in Dunedin or whatever, right? Okay. Yeah. And so um, when you do that though, they don't know it. And here's the dirty little secret is that they're psychologically obligated to reciprocate. They are because you've gone and done it without pretense without expectation of, a, of, a, of, of them, you know, returning the favor. But when you do that, when you go give up yourself to them, when you go donate time to a nonprofit, when you go do all these things we task you to do, and we're going to cover those at the end again, a reminder of why we make that part of our commitments, is that there's reasoning behind it because when you do those things, good things happen. Some people call it karma. Some people call it uh, fate. Um, I call it blessings, right? And other people have different terminology for it. But when you do the next right thing, good things come back. It's just, it's the law of the world, you can't, of the universe. You can't stop it, right? It's just, well, it's, I'm sorry, I'm going to go ahead no, and finish. No, I just wanted to say that one of the things that has always bugged me, I don't know why it, why it bothers me so much, is when I get a, either an email from someone or a business card, and either at the bottom of the email or in the back of the business card, it has the quote, the biggest compliment that I can get is a referral <laughs> from you to all your friends, that and that. Yeah, I, I find that that is so annoying. Oh, that it is. To me, to me the, biggest, the biggest compliment is uh, uh, one of my clients, uh, as I, met, I think I mentioned to you the other day, calling me on a Saturday afternoon saying, you want to go to a baseball game? And, oh, cool. I said, yeah, uh, uh, sure. That, that, you know, my, my wife's uh, sister or husband is sick, and uh, you want to go to a baseball game? Sure. It turns out to be a no-hitter. That's an accident. Nice. So, if you were there, then you no hit the Red Sox? Uh, yeah. Against yeah, Boston, yeah, that's right. I mean, yeah. you know, I think I saw you posted live from there, right? You post, Yeah, I remember. That's great. Yeah. I did. yeah. So, you know, that, that, that's a compliment. And I, and I get calls from... Uh, my clients, but a referral, there's just so many ways that you can use uh, verbiage and, and what have you that just to stay on people's minds all the time. A note, a, you know, a, a pop by, but a pop, a pop by from the heart, yes. not a pop by, hey, uh, remember me when you got a friend and I you know. It's and you're right, Raphael, and I'm glad you brought that up because we teach early on in our sessions that we are going to exclude this this phrase from our terminology. Everybody, I make Thank them raise their right hand. Says you. you are not going to end every sentence with. By the way, if you or anybody you know is looking to buy or sell real estate, I really would appreciate the referral. Right? Okay, yeah. we are t from early on. We're weaned on that. You get out of real estate school; it's the first script they make you they make you memorize. Right. And I'm telling you, Michael likes to joke that if you do that enough, you're going to end up in the NFL. It's called the no friends left league. <laughs> right. Because if everybody you talk to says, oh, no, here he comes again or here she right. comes again, I got to run the other way because the last thing you're going to do, it's like punctuation. Every sentence he ends with. By the way, anybody looking to know buy or sell real estate? By the way, you looking to know buy or sell real estate? By the way, anybody looking to know looking to get a mortgage? Right? It's just right. okay. Stop it. People will avoid you like the plague, right? Because yeah. that's not what they want. But if you go give massive value first, you know what they're going to do? They're going to call you up on a Saturday afternoon and say, "Hey, Raphael, I got an extra ticket to the game. Do you want to come?" Mm -hmm. yeah. Right? And guess what? That guy, if he anywhere in the world. Here's somebody that needs real estate services. They're going to say, oh, you got to call my guy, Raphael. I'm just telling you, that's a given. That is, there is no doubt in my mind, right? And not because you asked for it, but because you've earned it, because you've earned the right. Now, this one, and I'll tell this story, and you may have heard me tell this. So um, when I spend time in Nashville, I'm in Nashville and Orlando is kind of where the two houses are now. We're back and forth, but we spend still quite a bit of time in Nashville. 
and at the time we don't attend there anymore, but there was a church we were attending Brentwood Baptist church. Brentwood's a suburb of Nashville, very large, very affluent, probably eight to 10,000 people attend church there on a weekend. Right? Mm-hmm. Huge, right? Huge, really cool church. The pastor's great, very level headed. Um, and, uh, but you got a church that size, right? There's some pretty cool stuff that they can do because they have resources, right? They've got financial resources and they've got people resources to do some pretty cool stuff, right? Well, they decided, hey, look, you know what? They did a poll and they, they found they got 80 dentists that attend, right? So church that size, you got to get about 80 dentists that attend there. They just said, hey, look, once a month, would you donate three or four hours if we put together? And what they did is they outfitted this mobile dental lab, right? Uh, like a, 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 a dental, a dentist chair on, we, on, on, on wheels, right? Uh, in, a, in this souped up RV. And they said, if we did that, would you donate three to four hours a month to come and, and help us do this, right? So they put this team together. And what they do is they drive that to the inner city, all right? Because like I said, you got a very affluent, you know, area in where, where this is. And they drive this to the inner city. They open their doors and say, how can we help, right? And people come, oh, I've had this nagging. I don't have insurance, right? And so they start fixing people's teeth. And while they're fixing their teeth, they just at the end say, hey, look, is there anything we can pray with you about? Any way we can help? Anything we can do to assist your family, right? Let me ask you this. Then I also will go and, and during football season, we'll see uh, an NFL game. And behind the extra point, there's a guy with John 316 painted on his chest, right? And standing there. And let me ask you this. Who do you think is more effective in, a, in, in getting, getting through to people? My point would be that the, the dental lab has earned the right to be heard, right? right? Because they gave massive value first. Right. They have actually lived out Christ's command, right? And so now when you do that, now you've earned the right, right? Whereas if I just go out and do a big banner ad on Zillow, they don't know you from Adam. You haven't earned the right. There's nothing compelling about you other than, hey, your Photoshop picture looks pretty good, right? And whatever they did to whiten your teeth on there, I'm all in, right? <laughs> you know. And so with that in mind, why not just go be genuine and be real, have full of integrity in everything you do? Because um, the bottom line is this, and you've heard me say it all in the past, there is no new training in sales. Training in sales has been around since the dawn of time and is this, do what you do well and let other people tell right? That's all you need to do. Do what you do with a high level of excellence and let other people tell you, tell others about you, right? right? And you give them the opportunity to do that. So, but once again, you have to earn the right to have that conversation. Now, again, at the end, if you read Michael's book, he says, hey, look, we earn the right to have a referral conversation, but the referral conversation doesn't come up first. It's after you've already shown massive value. Fair enough. All right. To, to do that. Cool. All right. Questions on that. All right. So I'm just going to remind you back, if, back in the introduction session, we talked about, I painted this picture of how we're going to revolutionize or change our real estate business, how we're going to stop chasing, start attracting and all that kind of stuff. And I'm just going to give you all of these. <clears throat> so they're there. And by the way, Chris, I will um, remind myself and I don't know if Mara, my assistant is helping me out or listening in, but if she is, if she can send me a text, to remind me to post these um, PowerPoint, this PowerPoint to our uh, 100K group page, so you have it. In front of you. Um, Thank you. Yeah, absolutely. Um, but remember, we talked about, hey, this business isn't hard. This is simple. I got this. We're going to study those who are doing it and have done it. We're not going to reinvent the wheel. We're going to learn from each other, right? <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> We're going to submit uh, to the law of the harvest. We're not going to expect a harvest without p- planting the seeds. Too many people walk in and say, where's the harvest? Here I am, right? And the universe says, where's the work, <laughs> right? <laughs> there is no harvest without, there is no reaping without sowing, right? <laughs> and so we agree that we're not going to try and cheat that, that law, right? That the law's there, right? And we kind of joked about the story of the little red hen that we read to our kids all the time, right? That said, who will help me plant the seed, asked the hen. Not I, barked the 
dog. Not I, meow the cat. Not I. You know what I mean? Nobody wanted to do the work. At the end, when the little red hen was ready to eat, eat some bread that she had just baked, right? Three months later, they're all, hey, I'm in. I'm in for some bread. And she's like, no, bread is only for those who are willing to do the work, right? And so you only get to participate in the harvest if you do the work. Right. We're going to learn from our mistakes, right? It's okay to make mistakes. They're not mistakes. They're growing opportunities as long as we grow for them, right? And so that's okay. We're going to grow personally. We talked about that in all our LY situations. We're going to feed off the synergy in the room because people start – um, getting excited about the things that we do. And these are just going to be reminders for you throughout the summer as you task yourself to what you're going to do, right? Um, <clears throat> we're going to feed off synergy. We're going to stop making and accepting our, our lame excuses, all right, of why we're not implementing, right? We can all, uh, if you only knew my day. Well, guess what? We all have those days. I get it, all right? You, gotta, you just got to figure it out, all right? We're going to live in accountability with a true accountability partner and ideally a, a group, we're going to turn off the TV except for um, Blue Bloods, right, Raphael? <laughs> Absolutely. That's That's right. <laughs> oh, Raphael yeah. talked about that the other day. Um, I, I have one that I watch. I've been waiting for the next one to come in. It was on TV last night, and I haven't had a chance to see if it's on my uh, – the next uh, uh, episode is on me. But I watch um, The Americans. On It's on FX. Uh, and it's right. a Russia spy novel. Again, there goes back to my spies. That these <laughs> Russian spies that are in, in, infiltrated in America in the 80s. And they're all trying to overcome what Reagan is about to do to overthrow communism. They're trying to fight it off from the inside. So um, it's last season, though. So the, somebody's got to get turned in. They're going to get found out. I just know it. We're down to the last two or three episodes. So I can't wait for them to get caught. Um, anyway, uh, so uh, live in the count. Turn off the TV. Live a disciplined life. Right. This is another one of our, our, our favorite hashtags is that there's freedom and structure. Right. That it sounds oxymoronic. They, they don't go together. But the more structured we are, the freer we become. Right. Mm -hmm. The days where I feel most productive and therefore I have freedom to watch an episode of The Americans. Right. Is when I was structured throughout my day and got things done. Right. It's just bam, 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 bam. I just don't you feel better when you do that? Right? Don't you feel, I mean, Raphael's got a jump on us. He's got a three hour jump on us. We're already three hours behind Raphael. All right. He's yeah. going to get off of this and it's only going to be seven 30 out of his time. <laughs> <laughs> so he's ready to go. All right. Um, actually implement this time. Don't just say you're going to do it, but do it. Don't just know and not do right. Cause remember to know and not to do is not to know. Right. So this time we're going to finish. Right. We're going to trust the process. Others have done it. It's worked for them. Let me follow the recipe. Right. How do I bake a cake? I follow a recipe. Right. A trusted recipe that has worked for others. I'm not going to try and get now, Raphael, I think you're a little more creative because you're, you're a little more chefy than, than the rest of us. You told me that you love to cook. Right. Yeah. But for me, right. I can bake you something or I can make you something, but it's not going to be real creative. It's going to be something that Martha Stewart has already tested out and said, Hey, look, thumbs up. This works, you know? And even in that, I'm like, really? You're going to add that? It doesn't make sense. And then I taste it. I'm like, wow, I can taste the lemon juice in there. I can really taste the arugula. All right. Like what, what's arugula? I've never added arugula to anything. What, you know what I mean? And why would I do that? But, you know, it just, you know, but I followed the recipe and it came out okay. Because I, you know, I did that. So we're going to do that. Yeah. And then we're going to consistently evaluate progress. And if you haven't had a chance, go back and watch our old slides about a trip to the moon and how we monitor our progress. You know, the more often we monitor our progress, the better off we're going to be. Right. Then consistently evaluate our progress. Cool. All right. Yeah. Last thing is here are um, some suggestions we had. All right. For the upcoming uh, time, continue to give your affirmations. Raphael, you shared with me the other day that you kind of gotten out of, out of the habit of reading and um, doing some of this stuff. And this is kind of new to you, but you're experiencing some, some personal growth from it. Absolutely. Yeah. And that's kind of fun, right? Um, yeah, yeah. So <clears throat> if we can affirm ourselves, right? If we don't believe in ourselves, why would we expect other people to believe in us? True. Agreed. And doesn't be a false pride. It means to be one that is based upon the disciplines that you've set yourself to do. Okay. 
We're going to make the four rituals a way of life. Again, if you don't know those, we have the morning ritual, the pre-leave ritual, the pre-sleep ritual, and the Sunday night ritual. The old slides will show you that. Old sessions will go through though. The book goes to it in, in great, Michael Mayer's book goes in great detail. All right. <clears throat> make those a way of life. Continue to f treat your body well and eat correctly. Right. Continue. I would, <clears throat> trust me. If I could out exercise bad eating habits, that would be my choice, <laughs> right? Because I feel like, you know what? I'll get up earlier and I'll do an extra hour of workout if I could just eat the way I want to eat, the way my tongue tells me I want to eat. But I've had to learn that I, I can't be a slave to my tongue, right? Hat scroll one says, I will form good habits and become their slave. I'm going to be a slave to good habits, right? And so I've had to change and really work and you guys have heard the story about how Jeanette read years ago how oatmeal and whole grain oats <clears throat> are the virtual, and I quote this book directly, the virtual Muhammad Ali to good for fighting off bad uh, enzymes and bad uh, 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 things in our body, right? So from that day, <clears throat> the days of me having a nice slathered bagel with cream cheese or pastry <laughs> with what I wanted for breakfast, you know, have gone away, unfortunately. And I get, she has allowed me to dress up my uh, oatmeal with some sort of, you know, maybe a little bit of a granola type, healthier, grain free or, you know, gluten free granola type thing. But um, other than that, I've had oatmeal a lot um, uh, over the last three years. But, uh, you know, my Blood work comes in strong and healthy on a consistent basis, and I've seen a change, right, um, in doing it. So physical fitness, eating right, meet with an accountability partner consistently. Find somebody that you relate with that you can hold accountable and they can hold you accountable, that you have a good time together, you can enjoy, you can have fun, but there's work getting done, okay? Make that a task. Find or create a mastermind group and help each other. Howard and Janine, I know after the last session, you guys had a good little group there at your office. And, and did it, why not engage those people and say, hey, look, you know what, once a month, let's get together and just live life together. If nothing else, let's just break bread, right? Yeah. Right. Let's just, you know, get together and share. How are things going? What can we do to help? I don't want it to be a replacement for your individual accountability partner, but there's power in the group. If you remember the story of how I told you about how the uh, people went by the, um, I went by that running, that running store that morning, and there were about 50 people outside, even though it was eight degrees. It was six thirty or five five forty-five in the morning, and they were ready to go out and go for a nice long run. But all 50 of them were there. If they had to make the decision individually, and they knew that the only person that would know was them, they would never got up when it's eight degrees to go for a 13 mile run. Trust me, right? But when they know they've got a group that's waiting on them and counting on them, then they're in, right? Then they, and there's power in that. So seek that out, find it, right? I don't care, create it. If you have to create one yourself, go make that happen. I'm going to highly encourage you to do that, right? Um, uh, perform as many traffic generating events as is necessary to achieve your goals. How, mm -hmm. You know, what does that mean? I want to sell so many homes and I only have so many deals in the pipeline. There is only one answer. You've got to plant more seeds, Right. If your harvest isn't producing what you want, then you've got to create the harvest. But you can't create the harvest overnight. You, you know, you have to go do the work. And I don't know what that means, but you have to do, decide to get that done. Okay? Now, next one, have one-on-one -on -one meetings regularly. That means earn the right. Go give massive value to people. Take them out to coffee. Have lunch. I haven't caught up with you in a while. And to Raphael's point, we don't do it for the expectation of a referral. We don't do it so that at the end, we can say, hey, we're dabbing our mouth. That was a really great lunch. <clears throat> By the way, I did right. if you or anybody you know, <laughs> that is not what we're supposed to do, right? It's like at the end, if you're going to say anything, hey, Raphael, man, it was great catching up with you. What can I do for you? What's your biggest challenge right now? How can I help you? Boom. And you sit there and be a listener. That's how you consult people, right? How do you do needs-based selling? Needs-based selling is you've got to listen to a need and help them meet that need. 
too many of us are talking about, hey, here's how we're the greatest. Here's why you should use me. Here's why I'm the best. Here's why my mortgage company has the best rates. Here's why we have the best service, da, 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 right? Forget that. Listen to their need and say, great, let me help you. And that could be a need of anything, even outside our industry. Fair enough. But you can have the opportunities by doing that, by having one-on-one -on -one meetings. And remember, one-on-one -on -one meetings are eyeball to eyeball, right? Because eyeball to eyeball beats pixel to eyeball every day of the week. I would much rather be together with all of you face-to-face. -face. It would be an, even a more effective meeting if we could. But logistics don't allow us, so this is a second best option. But <clears throat> the reality is when you're meeting with potential people that could be referral sources for you, you want to go give them massive value. I de the best place to do that is eyeball to eyeball. Right. 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 Yeah. You know, um, and then finally stay disciplined, grow, monitor your progress uh, consistently. That's what the Sunday night ritual is all about. Adjust as necessary. That's also what the Sunday night ritual is all about and finish. Don't allow yourself to go halfway. Let's not just start bridges. Let's finish bridges, right? Because there's only one way to get across the river is if the bridge is finished. Not having six different started bridges with none of them finished. Are you with me? Cool? Yeah. And the last thing is, I'm going to remind you, these are our commitments that we uh, uh, started with way back in the day. <coughs> you can take a look at those. You know, I'm learning. I'm, I'm getting way better at getting eight hours of sleep a night. I've had this slide for years now, and I've finally worked myself off from six to six and a half to seven, and I'm learning to, co to control my time better so that I can, and when I do so, I stay healthier, I stay more vibrant, I stay more engaged when I do do things, and I'm learning that I had been wasting time elsewhere, and that's where I was losing my sleep, was wasting time, not because I was so busy I can't afford to get to sleep. That was BS when I looked at it, right? Mm -hmm. It's kind of like... Uh, Dave Ramsey would teach the first thing you need to do if you're going to try and cure your financial woes is to track every dollar you spend. Any, fine, any um, time management guru will teach you the first thing you need to do is track every hour down to the tenth of an hour. That means six minute increments, that one. right? That you go through and you say, what did I do? What did I do? So you track it so you can say, hey, you know what? If I add up all these little time wasters that I was on Facebook or whatever I was doing, right? Bet, 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 bet. Add them all up. There's my extra hour and a half of sleep right there, right? Um, and I still could have 10 minutes to what, look at Facebook all concerted in one fail swoop rather than four minutes, eight minutes, seven minutes, 10 minutes, 12 minutes, you know, spread out. And I find out that I wasted a lot of time. Uh -huh. okay. Yes. Our accountability meeting last week, we had um, Chris, um, I can't say his last name, but from Keller Williams and Laura. Oh yeah. oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I know who you're talking about. Howard and I at our office, so we did do that meeting. And uh, Chris came up with a really nice accountability thing. He had um, he had a checklist. Oh, yeah, we he, he made it in this one, in uh, Corel Draw. Right. Binder, and he put everything in the binder, and it was all the stuff on this list. Um, Family stuff, you know, time with um, nice, you know, tied in, you know, the, the whole nine yards, and, you know. So, could you reach out to him and see if he'd be willing to share that with us? He with the group? It with us. So, okay. I could, you know, ask him to share it to the whole group. And yeah, that'd be that'd be fantastic. Well, that's that's yeah. great. And I know you had stepped away, I don't know if you heard, but I'm gonna encourage you guys. I know you got a little group going, I'm gonna encourage you to continue meeting every other week, once a month, whatever works for everybody's schedules, but, but there's huge value in that. So I'm gonna encourage you to continue to do that. And that's fantastic. Absolutely. And we got to know each other too. Yeah. We room while hard. we were waiting, or, you know, we, we spent some time talking after and it, it was really, really good. So yes, we want, we want to start our version of Jam. <laughs> that's good. Well, that's perfect. And, and any way I can do to promote it or help you do that, let me know um, and, or whatever that might look like um, to, to do. I'm happy to, happy to be of assistance. Thank you. Cool. Hey, Bob, Bob one, yeah. uh, uh, a, a couple of things. Uh, one of them uh, is to uh, Janine, if you uh, care to in, uh, set up some kind of a Zoom conference like this, I would love to join that accountability group. Oh, cool. So I, when I get there, when I get there, I'm going to need help. Never been there. Believe it or not, I've never been there. Oh. And uh, so, so I need all the help I can get. Uh, number two. Chris, I'm going to need a loan officer out there. So we need to. Thank uh, you. <laughs> that's Serve first. So. 
And so, but, Rocky, uh, what, when are you moving here? What's that? When are you moving here? Uh, it looks like it may be, I may get there by September. Okay. Uh, okay. Well, perfect uh, timing. I'm going to register for the uh, exam in uh, October 6th, but I'm going to be there probably a month ahead of time. Uh, I got to find a place and uh, and things like that. Yeah, I got a lot of things to do. I got a long trip out there, got to pack, got to move, got to do all kinds of uh, things. You know, I'm looking forward to it. And Bob, can you go back a couple of slides to, uh, sure. uh, to uh, I, I got a comment on one of the points in there. Was it this uh, one or? It, uh, one, let me see, uh, one more, one more. Okay, I think, yeah, that, that, that's it, that's it, that's the one. Uh, this is something that I heard recently and then I had the opportunity to use it. Uh, the bullet point that says to stop making and accepting your lame excuses. Uh, I heard this and then I asked somebody, hey, how are you doing? And it's somebody that I know. And they said uh, a, a typical reply is, hey, I'm doing okay under the circumstances. You know, no. it's one of those uh, responses. And I said, just because I have heard the reasons, yeah, I said, what the hell are you doing under there? Why don't you do <laughs> And start doing something about your circumstances. And, you know, it, people get used to saying these things, oh, pretty good for a Monday. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> It's true. I mean, even in our family, we see it and we're like, oh. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. And, and you know, and the good thing is, too, is that um, when we've been enlightened, right, uh, to, to, to this, we have to understand, hey, look, you know what, they just haven't had a chance to be enlightened. So our role is, hey, look, let me help you, right? Let me help you through that. I used to think that way, too. Let me, let me yeah. you know what? Um, let's grab, you know what? Hey, let's grab some coffee sometimes. Let me tell you about this book I'm reading or whatever that's helped me get on top of my circumstances instead of under those circumstances. I love that. That's a great line. I, 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 I have a, uh, by the way, Bob, I have a, a book that I would love to uh, recommend to you. Perhaps you read it. It's called The Traveler's Gift. I don't uh, know that I have. Oh, you got to, you, you're going to like right. that. Uh, everybody's going to like that. It's an easy book to read. I'm not a great reader. And I've read that uh, even when I have not been a great reader, I've read that book about three times and I love to read it again. Awesome. Uh, kind of I'm, gives me a little, uh, yeah. kind of in the, on the way uh, similar to uh, uh, the greatest salesman in the world. Perfect, and perfect. It's by, it's by Andy Andrews, and it's an Oh, amazing. I know Andy Andrews. I'm really gonna, oh. I've read other Andy Andrews books, but... Okay, well, this is, this is my, uh, my favorite. I haven't read any others because I'm not a reader. I'm learning to read. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. so, you know, one of the great ways to get into reading is if you get an Audible, you know, or yes. something that the Audible uh, collection, and then what... Uh, you can use it as a multitasking situation. Do that while you're on the treadmill or whatever you've got going on or walking in your neighborhood or whatever those might be. It's, it's a good way to kind of get both done at one time. It's, it's fantastic. See, I yeah. have a hard time. I tend to like fade out and start paying that. I got to have like the book in front of me. To oh, make that's me. fine too. I get that. <laughs> <laughs> Something about <laughs> Yeah, I guess that the book has to be engaging enough for sure. Right. Yeah. Otherwise, <laughs> I think have like four Audible I started. <laughs> what was that, Janine? Oh, I I thought Audible makes it easier because, like you said, multitasking. You, you know, if it's you're trying to get through it, you know, it's right. And it, it depends on that. Some people are, you know, everybody learns in different modalities, right? Um, whether some people are visual learners as opposed to audible learners, to you know, whatever. So um, I think it's. Uh, I like to do both, quite frankly. I like to read a, a, a hard book sometimes, and I look. And a lot of times, I listen and then I read it, and it really drives it home. Um, exactly. So, uh, well, cool. All right. Well, I want to wrap this up so we can make sure I have a good solid because I'm gonna I'm gonna task a lot of people. The other, let's see, there are one, two, three, plus me is four. That leaves about fifteen hundred and forty-two others in the hundred K group that are not here. Yes. Um, <laughs> so. Well. I'm going to task them to watch this because I think there's some good value that you guys have added in here. And I really think that if I had a brand new agent, you know, they might have to research some of the stuff we're talking about here, but rather than pay 850 bucks to go to bold, I would say, hey, look, spend an hour and seven minutes and watch this and intrigue yourself enough to get the data and go hang out with one of these mastermind groups that are meeting 
to learn how to implement and make this a way of life as opposed to cold calling. And I think your life's going to be a lot better. Absolutely. Awesome. Cool. Well, thank you for allowing me to join. I appreciate it. Oh, anytime, Chris. We're glad to have you. And, and hopefully you and Raphael have made a good connection. So when Raphael yeah. comes out and he needs a good loan officer to, to uh, 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 introduce all his business to, and that and you can reciprocate that back to him and everything else. Be- so, that's I, need, awesome. I, need, I need everything from a doctor to the, uh, one of the 80 dentists in there that you have. In yeah, there. right. Well, they're in, they're in Nashville, so I'll have to figure one out around here. <laughs> oh, I actually know a really good dentist. One See, of the girls- this is how it works. It's our own oh, little yeah. B&I group. <laughs> here or find out where the nearest Paul Mitchell school is. That's fine. They have five <laughs> and uh, I, I need everything. Guys, seriously, seriously. Uh, I know. I, it's, 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 it's Orlando, Clearwater? Uh, I'm heading towards uh, Clearwater, Tampa out there. Okay, that's my side of town. Okay, we're done eating Clearwater. So if you need anything, please, you know, call us. If you need anything, don't don't say that. Don't, don't say <laughs> that. <laughs> and Howard, oh, I say you're gonna call her, and she's gonna say, "Oh, I'm doing pretty good for a Monday." Only <laughs> <laughs> mom under the circumstances, and she knows what I'm gonna say. <laughs> Sorry, Chris, I cut you off. Well, I said Howard. I sent a text. I'm seven five seven, so I didn't want you to be confused or wonder who. <laughs> Perfect. Okay. All right, okay. guys, I'm going to run, and you guys have a fantastic uh, week and weekend, and anything we can do, reach out in the group, and uh, um, this is our, our for- last formal session until probably the fall, but in the meantime, pay attention to the 100K page, because I may do some uh, oh. drop-in, hey, look, emergency uh, 100K Zoom session. I've heard too many negative thoughts going on. i got to re- get, get everybody back on track. Awesome. Okay, and I'm going to email this to the people from our accountability group that aren't online. <laughs> awesome. Yeah, definitely. Sounds and I'm going to start with it, asking a friend if they want to start a group. So thanks for the motivation. Awesome. You guys, you guys are the best. All right. Anything I can do to help, let me know. Okay. Thank uh-huh. you. All right. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. All right. Have a good thank one. you. Bye. Hi, Chris. Chris.